Welcome to your next practice. I'm going to start you lying down on your back, please. Lie down into Shavasana. Relax, settle. As they say, arrive on your mat. And that means letting go of anything that you were doing earlier, letting go of any preconceived notions of how you're going to meet your practice today. Letting go of the to-do list for later. And just be here. So be here for your practice. Commit to that presence of mind for the next hour and 15 minutes or so. So when you're lying down, begin to notice the sensations in your physical body. And let that ground you and center you even more. Feeling into each and every sensation. And let your mind be curious. What are you finding upon your mat today? And every time that we practice, things are different mentally, physically, emotionally. So just check in with yourself. What are you feeling today? And as the weight of the body sinks deeper and deeper, as you relax further and further, allow yourself to really internalize. And fix your attention now upon your breath, your natural breath. Feel the swelling of the belly with the inhale, the sinking of the navel with the exhale. Keep the attention upon your breath. All of your attention upon your breath. And now we'll deepen and lengthen the breath, complete yogic breathing. Exhale until there's no more air to exhale from the lungs. And then inhale, belly, rib cage, chest and shoulders expand. Exhale, chest, rib cage, and belly sinks down. Inhale, belly, rib cage, chest and shoulders expand. Exhale, chest, rib cage, and belly sink down. Please continue to notice your breath using the complete breath to tune you in to your internal world. In this present moment, going inside, being with your breath, continue this practice for the next few moments. Nothing matters now but your breath. Observe your next exhale right down to the end of the exhale. At the end of 
the exhale, hold your breath out just for a few moments, holding your breath out. And then allow your natural breath to return. Slowly begin to wake your body, wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, move your hands and your feet, turn your head side to side, take a stretch, reach your arms up, point your toes, if they lift, great big stretch. And then relax. If you have blankets or props, put them to one side. And we'll start lying down on the back. Ankles underneath the knees or thereabouts. Feet are hip distance apart and toes are pointing straight forward. Knees are hip distance apart. The knees don't knock in, the knees don't roll out. So just noticing the weight of the feet on the floor. Noticing the weight of the feet on the floor. And then notice, are you holding any unnecessary tension? Are the shoulders bound up? Can you relax the shoulders down? Can you tuck your chin a little closer to your chest? If you feel like you're swanning the neck up, maybe put a blanket underneath the back of your head. With the weight of the feet on the floor, just press down maybe 10% more than you're already doing it. And just notice again, so have we tightened up the shoulders? Have we clenched the jaw? So with this 10% press of the feet down into the floor, just notice any changes in the body. And then relax. And then now 20% put the weight down into the floor. And relax. 30% put more weight into the floor. And relax. Now 50% of your full effort into the floor. And relax. Now what would it feel like to put 100% of the weight down? It feels like you almost want to lift the pelvis off the floor, but we're trying not to let that happen. So really, with 100% of your effort, push your feet into the floor for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Relax. Excellent. Really good. Okay. Now put, again, maybe... 30 to 50% of the weight into the floor, as if you're pushing your feet through the floor. And we'll begin with pelvic tilts. So keep that weight in the feet, roll onto the tip of the tailbone, roll onto the top of the tailbone. Arching the low back, anterior tilt, flattening the low back, posterior tilt. Just feeling that roll from one side of the tailbone to the other. the practice and just feel any accessory sensations. So what else is happening? You know, there's always a mindful practice. We're never just moving mindlessly. We're never just moving with distraction. We're really paying attention. That's the practice of yoga. Okay, the next time your lower back sinks down towards the floor, reassess and see, do you have that 30 to 50% of the weight of your feet down into the floor? And then begin to peel your spine off the floor, vertebrae by vertebrae, peel your spine off the floor. Lift the pelvis up as high as you can get it to go. Now push 100% of the weight of your feet into the floor. Press down, keep the hips up, keep the hips up, keep lifting through the hips, engaging through the buttocks. And then... Lower down, vertebrae by vertebrae. Lower back down towards the floor. And roll into your anterior tilt. Lower back arches just a little bit. And then again, flatten the low back down. Still we have 50% weight into the feet. And we begin to peel the spine off the floor, vertebrae by vertebrae. The weight into the feet is growing as we rise up. By the time we get to the top, 100% weight, feet down into the floor, as if you could push them through the floor. Pelvis is lifting, buttocks are engaged. Lift up, lift up, lift up, and then sink all the way back down. And roll into your anterior tilt. Now notice if the knees are wobbling. If the knees are wobbling, we probably aren't engaging the muscles in the legs to stabilize them. So just notice that, feel it. We're gonna do three more rounds like this. So again, about 50% of weight, pressing the feet through the floor. And then lower back flatten, peel your spine off the floor, vertebrae by vertebrae, weight will move into the shoulders, 100% weight into 
to feet. Press up. Press up. Press up. Press up. Press up. Press up. And then release down. And roll into the anterior tip. Forward tilt of the pelvis. And then flatten the low back down. Peel the spine off the floor again. Peel the spine off the floor. Lift up. Push through the feet. Engage through the glutes. Lift. 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 And release. Two more. Peeling the spine off the floor. Bringing the feet down through the earth. Lifting up. So the relationship of pressing the feet down is the relationship of you opposing gravity to press the hips up. And release. One more. And release. Straighten out the legs. Let the feet roll out to the side. Just relax for a moment. Just be with your deep belly breathing, diaphragmatic breath. Come back into that bent knee position with the ankles underneath the knees. Knees are hip distance apart, Kaiser leg number 11, side by side in parallel. So this time, we're going to do the same thing, five rounds, but we're going to lift up onto the heels. So we're flexing at the ankle joint, lifting the toes up. Just a different sensation. So maybe now with the feet, with the toes up and the heels pressing down, work into your anterior and posterior tilt. Pelvic tilt forward and back, and just see what that feels like. Again, now, because it's a new sensation in the legs, maybe the knees are wobbling, maybe you need to engage the thighs a little bit more. We're just sending feedback to the brain in these different um, patterns, in these different shapes. And the more interesting feedback that we can send to the brain, the more efficient our brain will be at knowing how to move our body in space. So it's good to challenge your brain. Don't always do the same thing. Shift it, change it, even ever so slightly. Okay, flatten the low back to the floor, keep the heels pressing down, and now peel the spine off the floor, vertebrae by vertebrae. Lift all the way up, press into the feet, 100% driving the feet into the floor, using the glutes to lift the pelvis, opening the front of the hip, and then peel down, vertebrae by vertebrae. And roll into the anterior tilt. Okay, four more like that. So about 50% of weight pressing down into your heels. Flatten your low back. And that begins to, as you begin to lift your pelvis away from the floor, you press the feet down more. So 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, 100%. Pressing the hips up towards the ceiling. Pressing the heels into the earth. And then all the way back down. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Roll into the anterior tilt. Three more by yourself. So just feel into it. Once you've completed three, stretch your legs out long, let the toes roll out, relax. Notice your deep belly breath, diaphragmatic breathing. Ground into that deep belly breath.
fingertip toes. So you're on a bulk of the feet, pressing your toes down into the earth really firmly, especially the big toe. And then notice again, maybe the knee drag to knock in, maybe the knee drag to roll out. How can we get the legs even, pressing down into the balls of the feet? Again, in this position, so we're sending a message to the brain, and it's probably not something we're used to. So just feel into it as we roll through our pelvic tilt, forward, backward tilt. Next time your low back plans to the floor, hold it there. About 50% of the weight into the balls of the feet and the toes. Begin to peel your spine off the floor, vertebrae by vertebrae. Come up as high as you can. Press down through the feet, lift up through the pelvis. Lift, 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 lift. And roll all the way back down, vertebrae by vertebrae. And the lower back flattens, roll into your forward, anterior tilt of the pelvis. And we'll go again. So four more rounds by yourself. You've got the idea by now. Stretch the legs out. Again, toes roll outwards, relaxing the legs. Deep belly breathing, diaphragmatic breath.
what does it feel like? What's different? What's changed? Can you control it? Go back down after your fifth round, stretch up the legs, relax, diaphragmatic breathing. Take the ankle front of the knees again. This time, right foot stays where it is. The left foot steps slightly forward, so towards the end of your mat. Flexing the left ankle so that the toes pull back towards the knee. Put most of your weight into your right foot now. So just feel that. Feel the weight distribution. 70% weight into your right foot. 30% weight into your left foot. And then pelvic tilt. Roll the pelvis forward. weight distribution changed as you're taking your attention to your pelvis, what's happening? Next time that you flatten your low back to the floor, keep 70% weight into your right foot, 30% of weight into your left foot. Peel your spine up, up. <laughs> peel your spine off the floor, be happy if I could speak. Keep pressing right foot firmly into the floor, lift, 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 and return all the way back down. And roll into the forward tilt, then roll into the backward tilt, flatten the low back, and do it again. Peel the spine off the floor. Notice what you notice. until you've done five. Once you've done five, you guessed it, straighten up the legs, relax, and notice your diaphragmatic breath. time, bending the knees, putting the feet back on the floor, walk the feet slightly wider than hip distance, and move your knees side to side like windscreen wipers. with the knees pointing up. Step the feet at distance. 
distance apart again. So from here, we're going to bring the right knee towards the chest until you keep it behind your right thigh. Keep the right knee drawing in, softening your shoulders. And just allow that right knee to sink, sink, sink. Now it's moving slightly outwards towards your right armpit. Keep the right knee in towards the chest. So you're drawing that right knee in. Extend your left leg up towards the ceiling. So the left leg extends up towards the ceiling. Keep the lower back flat, engaging the pelvic floor, engaging the glutes, engaging the low belly. Keep extending up through that left heel. If there's a slight bend in the knee, that's fine. Don't go to where you're trembling or shaking. Now left leg, just feel into that, hold that leg. Right knee stays sinking down towards right armpit. And move your left leg down about 15 degrees towards the floor. Keep extending out through your heel. Keep the right knee in. Left leg goes down about 30 degrees towards the floor. Keep your lower back down towards the floor. Strong core connection. Going down about 45 degrees. 60 degrees. 75, we're near the floor. And then hover just above the floor, so we're in pretty much 90. But you keep your right knee very close to your chest and your lower back flat. And then bring your left leg back up to where it started. Let's go down 15 degrees, left leg. 30, keep pressing out through the heel. 45. 60. 75. 90. Keep the right knee in. And go all the way back up towards the ceiling. One more time just like that. Okay, let's go down 15. Go down around 30. Keep the lower back down. 45. 60. 75. 90. Keep the right knee in. Keep the lower back flat. Keep extending out through your heel. You're just above the floor. Bring the left foot back up towards the ceiling. Now point and flex left foot. 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 One more point and flex left foot. Put the left foot back down on the floor. Bring the right knee slightly forward. Knee rotation, right foot, right leg, should I say. Change direction, knee rotation, other way. And then settle right foot down to the floor. Bring your left knee in towards your chest. Interlace your fingers behind the left thigh. Sink the left knee down and slightly out so the left knee is moving towards the left armpit. Hold there for a moment. And keeping the lower back flat, right foot goes up towards the ceiling. So you're flexing at the right ankle and you're pressing upwards towards the ceiling. Could be a soft bend in the knee, going to your degree of straight. If it's causing any tension in the nervous system, just relax it and maybe you can move back into it. Okay, we're going to keep the lower back flat, strong core connection. Lower down your right foot about 15 degrees. About 30 degrees, straight leg. 45. 60. 75. 90. Keep your lower back flat. If you can't keep your lower back flat, maybe don't go down to the full 90 degrees. Stay at 75 and push your heel forward. Go all the way back up straight towards the ceiling. Let's do two more sets of that. So let's go down. 15, thereabouts. 30. 45, keep straightening at the leg. So from here down, maybe you'd like to pause in one of the particular um, degrees. So 60, 75, lower back's flat, 90 if you can manage. And all the way back up. One more set of that. So let's go down. 15, 30, 45. If you can keep the lower back flat and all the way back up, excellent. 
lower, that foot back down to, oh no, I'm telling you a lot, keep that leg straight, point and flex your foot, point and flex, right foot, point and flex, point and flex, point and flex, one more, point and flex, excellent, now we put the foot down onto the floor, bring your left knee slightly forward, knee rotation left. direction. And put that left foot all the way down to the floor. Walk the feet close together. So if the feet touch, let the knees open wide. Hands down, diaphragmatic breathing. Try not to arch the low back here. Keep the lower back flat down towards the floor. And let the knees sink wide. Be passive. wide, press the soles of the feet together. So feel the soles of the feet pressing together. Feel the sensation you're creating in the legs. Keep your knees wide. Hands on the floor, palms face down, shoulders pressing down into the earth. Try not to overarch your low back. Keep the knees wide. Buttocks will get strong here. Lift the pelvis up towards the ceiling as high as it'll go. Keep your knees wide and then go all the way back down. And again, lift up. more like this. Lift up and down. Lift up and down. One more like this. Lift up and down. Bring your knees together. Walk your feet slightly wider than hip distance. Supine rest position. Knees touch together. Relax. back to the body, take the knees apart, walk the feet back into hip distance. So the next movement will be very similar to the movement we've done with the leg, we've done it with a single leg. So if you found it hard to keep your lower back flat down towards the floor when the leg went past, let's say 45 degrees, I would like you to just take your hands and take them underneath your low back and then press your low back down into your hands. The shoulders will be broad. It almost feels like you're trying to slide your hands away from each other, so it's not just passive in the arm. So it feels like we're trying to pull the, the hands out from underneath the low back consistently, and we're trying to crush our hands with our low back consistently. Then bring the knees up so that the knees now stack above the hips, and the ankles here are in line with the knees. Press your low back down into the floor. We're going to move down just a little towards the floor, and then press your low back into your hands. And then a little closer towards the floor with the heels, press the low back down. Closer towards the floor with the heels, press the low back down. Just hover above the floor with the heels, press the low back down, and come back up. Let's do that three more times. So, keep the low back flat down onto your hands. Lower the knees down just a little. And again, low back down. And again. And again. Hover just above the floor. And come back up. Excellent. So what you might notice here is that when you begin to go down, that your low back really arches, you can't press it down into your hands anymore. So we're just learning to do that. So keep the low back flattened down, keep pressing the hands down into the floor also, lower down just a little, a little more, a little more, a little more, and just hover above the floor and come all the way back up. 
Put your feet back down onto the floor. Take the hands out from underneath the low back. Knees together, feet slightly wide, supine rest position. Notice your breath. These moments where we just notice the breath and allow ourselves to integrate what we just did are quite beneficial. So this is where we're really practicing yoga, where we're allowing ourselves to be mindful, mindful of our breath and our bodies, mindful of the sensations that are occurring within our bodies. That's far more beneficial than just moving posture to posture to posture and really getting lost in that integrating what we've just learned in the previous posture. So take this time to integrate. So your challenge here, so if you found that we still have the lower back arching, maybe you can try to keep the lower back flat to the floor without your hands this time, just as much effort, and you don't need to go down so far that your lower back is flat, and that your lower back is arching. We're going to try and maintain that the lower back is close to the floor. So now without your hands, you're going to be lowering down the heels towards the floor in increments. So if, that, if you could keep that, if you were able to, Heel your lower back flattening towards the floor. We're going to progress a little bit. Again, after a certain position, if you feel like you're arching, I'd like you to move back up a little bit. So let's say, for example, my lower back is flat. And I say, come down 15 degrees, it's fine, my lower back is flat. 30 degrees, it's fine, lower back is flat. 45 degrees, it's fine. I move beyond the 40 degrees, 45 degrees, and my lower back arches. Move back up to the 45, extend out through the heels and flatten the lower back and hold it there and then come back up to where you started. So that you're training in the position of flattening the low back with stability, so then you can build it up over time. So nobody expects you to be able to um, do this if you've not trained it in, you know? So it's important to give yourself the time, as I said, to integrate the practice. So let's try to move the legs all the way down towards the floor in increments, keeping the legs as straight as possible. We're gonna do three rounds. So three sets all together. So when you're ready, flatten the lower back down towards the floor. So it's your choice whether you're just bringing the knees up and practicing the lower back flat or whether you're straightening the legs to the best of your ability. Keep the lower back as flat as possible. Keep that lower belly connection. Lower down about 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60, 75, 90s hovering just above the floor, and we come all the way back up. Let's do that again. So keep the lower back flat, lower down, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90s hovering just above the floor, and we go all the way back up. Keep the lower back flat. Can we do one more? Maybe you need to bend the knees now. Let's go. 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, hover, 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 all the way back up. Hug your knees in towards your chest, hands on the knees, roll the knees so that we're massaging the lower back and take them into the floor. Change direction. And then lower the feet down, roll onto one side. Let's come up to seated. So you did good work there, really strong work. If you need to sit up onto a block, feel free. Hands onto your knees, elbows draw back in beside your waist. Again, we're working with the pelvic tilt and we're going to work with extension and flexion in the spine. So roll your pelvis slightly forward, lift your belly button, your breastbone, your chin, look up. Exhale, round your spine, tucking your tailbone under, curling it. Inhale, lift the chest, it's like a seated cow and cat. Exhale, round your spine. Inhale. Please. So 
strong back up. Neutral spine, shoulders stack above your hips. Reach your arms out to the side. Palms face up. Touch your shoulders. Keep the elbows broad. Again, we're going to go through our seated cat and cow this time. As you roll the pelvis forward, we draw the elbows back and down. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Exhale, round the spine. Squeeze the elbows together. Full spinal flexion. Inhale, open. Exhale, round the spine. Inhale, open. Exhale, round the spine. Lift, pubic bone to belly button, belly button to breast bone, breast bone to chin, chin to tip of the nose. Exhale, rounding. Two more. One more. And come back up. Keep the elbows wide and then we'll sweep into shoulder rolls. So elbows move together. Got a great big shoulder rolls. Drawing circles with the point of your elbow. Moving from the shoulder joint. Next time the elbows come together, change direction. Shrug your shoulders up to your ears, squeeze tight for five, four, three, two, and one go. <sighs> two more times like that. Squeeze five, four, three, two, <sighs> one more like that. Squeeze five, four, three, two, <sighs> great. Chin down towards your throat. Move your chin from left collarbone to right collarbone. Left collarbone to right collarbone. Left collarbone to right collarbone. Continue. One more either side. Chin back down towards the throat. Lift the chin up parallel to the floor. Left your left shoulder. Right your right shoulder. Left your left shoulder. Right your right shoulder. Continue to move. as always. So we'll begin with our wrist warm-up. We'll lean forward and back, pressing the, the fingers into the floor, pressing the heel of the hand into the floor, moving into this what's called a plunge position where the shoulders are beyond the wrists and moving back out a bit. So we're loading up our wrist joints. or just press the palms down into the floor. center. Turn your fingers back towards your knees. And then in this position, again, I will just press them down. If you still got your fingers slightly out towards the side, I would just press down. I wouldn't lean forward and back. But if you've got the crease of the wrist in line with the front of the mat, then you're going to lean forward and back. And again, just feel the sensation pressing down into the heel of the hand. Let's 
do two more. Come back with the shoulders above the wrist, turn your fingers back to the front. Cow and cat, so knees underneath your hips, wrists underneath your shoulders. Inhale, belly button goes down towards the floor, lift the tailbone, lift the breastbone, look forward and up. Exhale, round your spine, angry cat. Inhale, cow pose, arch in the low back, extension through the spine. Exhale, cat pose, flex in the spine. Just one more, either direction. And coming back to a neutral spine. Come to stand up on your knees now. So essentially we want to stack the shoulders above the pelvis, so the shoulders above the hips and straight down towards the knees. So sometimes we could arch a wee bit. We want to press the hips forward. So it feels like you're almost pushing into an imaginary support in front of you. So with this, basically, what I want to do is get you to understand how to extend from your thoracic spine so that we're not forever jumping into the low back, which would cause a lot of compression into our lower lumbar vertebrae. Really, when we do any back bending position, we want to feel that we're moving from our middle spine, lifting the rib cage away from the pelvis. So in something like the cow and cat, the weight isn't going to be pressing the spine downwards, as in gravity isn't forcing my spine down because I'm in the, the quadruped position. But when I come up, so in any standing position in, um, let's say, your... Any, any, any back bend from a standing position like camel that we're about to do or the crescent moon lunge or something like this we need to be really aware of how we're moving against gravity rather than being compressed down into it so this is what i'd like you to understand for the next um few postures so the hips are pressing forward that's always a constant in any of these that means that your glutes are on pressing the hips forward just like in the variations of bridge now Pressing the feet down into the floor with the tops of the feet pressing down. If you find this uncomfortable, you could roll up a blanket and place it underneath the ankles. Otherwise, we're just trying to press the ankles firmly down into the floor. So, I would like you to just rest your hands down to the outside of the hips. And then feel your shoulders open so that we're not constantly having the shoulders rounded in. So the shoulders move back and down. The shoulder blades move down the back. I like to imagine that the head of my upper arm is like a matchstick or even like this drum beater here. So the top of the beater basically wants to move back and down so that the head of my arm is moving back and down rather than being in this forward position. So basically, once we have that position, hands are on the outside of the legs. Tuck your chin down so that we're not just swanning the chin up thinking we're getting this great big extension position. I want you to feel it from your waist upwards, as if you're trying to lift your rib cage up towards the ceiling. So begin to slide your hands down the outsides of your thighs. Continue this lift of the breastbone, keep the chin tucked down. Lift your breastbone, 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 breast and come all the way back up. So what would happen if I was compressing into the low back, if you can see your screen for a moment, if I was compressing into the low back, I'm not lifting my breastbone at all, I'm moving back and already it feels so uncomfortable here. And you probably see quite a harsh angle at my low back, like my vertebrae have almost gone into this um, arrow shape pointing that way. Instead, I want to feel like my vertebrae are lifting away from each other, that my vertebrae are extending away from each other, like they're being repelled. And they are actually being repelled by the, um, the, the fluid between them. This causes two ionic forces that are moving your bones apart away from each other. But if we don't allow for that to happen, we're just compressing and almost thinking into that low back. I hope you understand, so I'm going to try and show you again. So this would be compression and then extension is lifting, lifting, lifting. There's a relationship of my feet or, and my knees from the tip of my toe down into my, up to the top of my knees, pressing into the earth. My buttocks are pressing my hips forward. So that's the start of the extension. And then again, I'm lifting from my pubic bone to my belly button, from my belly button to my breastbone, 
my breastbone to my chin, but I'm not lifting my chin in this position so that I can continue to lift my breastbone up. Now my breastbone is being lifted by a magnet to the ceiling. Lift, 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 and rise back up. Lovely. Okay, keep imagining you're pressing the hips forward into an invisible force, into an invisible um, resistance. So let's do that one more time and then we're going to progress. You might think this sounds very basic, but I bet you're feeling something that you haven't felt before just by being more aware of it. You might practice like this the whole time, but I want you to bring your attention to this extension. So press down through your shins, tops of the feet, knees, hips forward, first step, and then we're keeping the chin tucked down for this set. So we're allowing the hips to move forward. We're lifting from pubic button to belly button, from pubic bone to belly button, from belly button to breastbone, breastbone to ceiling, lift lift, lift, and come back up. Beautiful. So if you find that you're compressing into your low back, maybe just go a little bit at a time and just feel like you're getting that extension from your armpit to your hip, from your breastbone to your belly button, lift, 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 the ribs move up. Now, if you've got it and you feel like you'd like to progress a little deeper, let's take the hands into the low back, traditional beginning of camel pose, Ustrasana. Shoulders move back and down, remember? Head of the upper low, arm moves back and down. Hips press forward into this invisible resistance in front of you. And then pressing down through my feet, I'm gonna keep my chin tucked down. I'm lifting pubic bone, belly button, breastbone, and now I can feel my hands on my low back. So I can feel like I'm moving my rib cage away from my pelvis. Keep the chin tucked down, lift the breastbone, lift the breastbone, lift the breastbone, and slowly come back up. Okay, relax for a moment. We're not going to fold forward yet. We're just going to keep this neutral position. We're going to do that two more times, and then we're going to progress again. So, hips are forward, hands are on the low back. Now, I mentioned in the last one that you might feel that your hands are giving you a little bit of guidance. Let me just show you that for a second. So, if I was to go into the relaxed position, so now I've not extended my hips forward, I'm already compressed in my low back, and I can feel it with my hands. So that if I move back and I'm compressing, I can feel the weight of my ribs pressing down into my hands. So let's go for the extension again. So press the hips forward. There's a relationship between my legs and the floor. Press the hips forward. And then we're lifting breastbone and ribcage up towards the ceiling. Shoulders are back. Keep the chin tucked down. Press the hips forward. Lift the breastbone. Lift the breastbone. Lift the breastbone. And come back. Beautiful. One more time. I'm going to let you do it by yourself. I'm not going to speak this time. So get ready. Come all the way back up. Wonderful. Okay. So this might be your limit now. Maybe, maybe not. If you want to progress with me, we're going to do three more rounds. But this time we're going to put the weight onto our, or we're going to put our hands onto our ankles. So sometimes this is unachievable. So I'm just going to talk you through that a little bit. So it's going to be the exact same setup. So the hips will press forward and the hands are on the lower back. So I hope you're watching now instead of practicing. And then when I've shown you, we'll practice it together. So you're going to press the hips forward again, just like the last time we find all of extension and the chin is tucked in. Then my right hand is going to see, can I find my right ankle? I'm not turning to achieve this. If I can't find my right ankle and I'm waving around in space, what do I do? I put my hand back on my low back and I keep my extension and I might just come back up and then go back into it. So if you can't reach the ankle, there, that's not a big deal. Reaching the ankles doesn't make you smarter, sexier or more rich, but it is a lovely progression if we're there. So. We're going to press the hips forward, hands onto the lower back, shoulders back and down. Press the hips forward, let's go back into this first camel position. If I can find my right ankle, I can find my right ankle. If I can find my left ankle, I can find my left ankle. If I move my hips back, let's press them forward. I'm lifting through the breastbone, and then only then, if it's comfortable to do so and it's not causing you strain in the neck, push your tongue into the roof of your mouth and lift the tip of your nose towards the ceiling. Tucking the chin, right hand comes up first, left hand comes up first, then I rise up. 
So sometimes what tends to happen is when we go back into the big spinal extension, our chest is open, our heart is open. It's a super vulnerable position, you know? Innately, our animal brain goes, this is scary. So what tends to happen, and I see it a lot in classes, is that, you know, we're there, and all of a sudden, we get this wave of fear and anxiety, and we go, whoa, and you just throw yourself up. And then that's when we tend to get, um, you know, a little pinch in the low back because we came up without being mindful. So if you start to get that wave of anxiety, that wave of, oh my God, this is vulnerable, then I'd like you to take back control. Think to yourself, three step rule, right hand low back, left hand low back, rise back up slowly. So settle into that sensation of feeling unsafe and then say to yourself, I am taking back control. I safely rise up, right hand, left hand, rise. I hope that makes sense. So that we're not just throwing ourselves back up and feeling and continuing to feel that degree of um, anxiety, you know? So let's do this together. So we're gonna do three rounds of this full camel or any of the previous pre uh, preparations that I've just shown you. So. Hands are on the low back, hips press forward. We keep the chin tucked down. So first we find that start position, keep the chest lifted. And then maybe I can find my right foot. If I have, then I find my left foot. If I've moved my hips back, I press them forward. I keep the lift in the chest, my breastbone's moving to the ceiling like a magnet. Then, only then, press the tongue into the roof of the mouth, lift the tip of the nose to the ceiling, open. Tuck your chin, right hand, left hand, rise with control. Pause for a moment. We're going to do two more. I'm going to talk you through one and I'll let you practice one mindfully. So, again, hands around the low back, hips press forward, shoulders back. So, from here, we move back into the camel position, start position, keep the chest lifted, the buttocks are engaged. They're protecting the low back. Right hand might find right ankle, left hand might find left ankle. If I have moved my hips back, press them forward again, lift my breastbone, nose to the ceiling, tongue to the, to the roof of the mouth, press. Tuck your chin, right hand, left hand, all the way up. Pause for a moment. One more by yourself with mindful attention to every single part of the pose. Okay, so get ready. Once you've risen out of that, please place your hands back down to the floor. Downward facing dog, curl your toes under, lift your knees, press your chest and belly back towards your thighs, walk out your dog if you need to. We're lengthening at the backs of the legs, we're lengthening through the spine. stillness and then begin to walk your feet forward towards the front of your mat. Little baby steps. Maybe you need to lift up onto your fingertips. Walk all the way forward towards the front of your mat. Let your chest sink down over the legs. Bend your knees slightly. Take hold of opposite elbows. Release your arms, half lift, lengthen the spine, lift the chest away from the thighs. Take your hands to your hips, come all the way up standing. Standing now at the front.
front of your mat. Take your hands in front of your heart in prayer. We're going to move through three rounds of your Chandra Namaskara, the Satyananda style Chandra Namaskara, which is the moon salutation, exactly like the classical sun salutation with crescent moon lunge added. So 14 postures instead of 12 postures in your classical sun salutation. We're going to take these three rounds slowly and with control. So feet hip distance apart. Again, as always, we're in a neutral position. The hips are pressing forward. Inhale, reach your arms out to the side and up. Slight back bend if you like. Maybe touch the hands in prayer. Hips forward, lift through the breastbone. Exhale, folding forward and down towards the floor. Soft knees. Fingertips either side of your feet. Right foot steps back into low lunge. Left knee is exactly above left ankle, top of the right foot to the floor. So there's weight evenly distributed through both legs. Begin to reach your arms forward and up. So first find neutral with the shoulders stacked above the hips. And then with everything we've learned about a back bend, press the hips forward, lift from the pubic bone to the belly button, to the breastbone, to the chin, to the tip of the nose, lift up through the chest. So we're not collapsing down, we're lifting, we're rising, we're buoyant. The hands slow motion come back to the floor and then curl the back set of toes under, move back into your downward facing dog, holding down the dog for a moment. Then knees down. Please use your variation of knees, chest, chin to the floor that we've worked through in previous videos. If it's available to you, Ashtanga Namaskar, taking the chest down. Rolling into cobra. Remember now everything we know about a back bend. We're pressing the hips into the floor. The shoulders move back. I don't even need my hands because my spine is doing the work. The muscles either side of my spine are lifting me. Back into your downward facing dog. Look towards the right hand, make space. Right foot lightly steps forward. Left knee finds the floor. Again, we're going to rise to crescent moon lunge. Equalize the weight between the feet. And up we rise. Upper arms go in line with the ears. Keep weight in that back foot. The glutes are strong. Remember everything we learned about the back bend. Lift the chest. Look up. Slowly releasing the hands back to the floor. This time we're going to step to the front of the mat. So, curl the back foot of toes under. Lift your back knee. Step forward. Standing forward. Bend over both legs. Inhale, raise to ceiling, extend it to Dasana. Maybe touch the hands together in prayer and a baby back bend. Hands come down in front of the heart, that's half a round complete. Stepping side. Inhale, reach the arms out to the side and up. Palms together, press the hips forward, baby back bend. Exhale, fold forward and down, standing forward bend. Left leg this time goes back into low lunge. Right knee stacked above right ankle. Top of the left foot on the floor. Chest begins to lift, reaching the arms up. Crescent moon lunge up, arms in line with your ears. Press the top of the back foot down. Lift your chest. So remember the hips are pressing forward. We're lifting pubic bone to belly button, to breast bone, to chin, to the tip of the nose. Lift your chest. Slow motion, the hands go back to the floor. So we're controlling that descent even. Curl the back set of toes under, we go to downward dog. Knees down. Maybe you're just going to take cow and cat here. Maybe you can lower all the way to the floor and scoop to your cobra. Remember, it's the muscles of the spine, especially middle and upper, that are drawing you back. Very little need for your hands. Downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward lightly to the front of the mat. Back knee, right knee down. Crescent moon lunge, we reach forward and up. And we take a safe back bend by lifting and extending through the middle spine. Hands go back down. This time right foot's going to step forward. Curl the back toes under, lift the knee. 
Step forward to the front of the mat, feet are side by side, standing forward bend. Inhale, reach out and up. Maybe palms touch, maybe their wrist or uh, shoulder distance apart. Palms together, if you can, baby back bend. And hands down in front of the heart, be with your breath. Second round, a little bit faster. Inhale, reach the arms out. Extend it to the asana, baby back bend. Exhale, fold forward and down. Right foot steps back, low lunge, crescent moon lunge. Hands to the floor, downward facing dog. Knees down, chest and chin. Cobra. Downward dog. Right foot steps forward, low lunge. Reach up and back, crescent moon lunge. Hands to the floor. Left foot steps forward beside the right foot, standing forward, bend over two legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, reach to the ceiling. Extend it to the asana, maybe a little back bend. Hands to your heart, half around. Inhale, reach out and up. Little back bend. Exhale, forward, forward and down, Uttanasana, standing forward, bend over two legs. Left foot back, low lunge. Arms reach up, crescent moon lunge. Hands to the floor, downward dog, knees down, chest and chin, cobra, downward dog, left foot forward, low lunge, reach up crescent moon, hands down, back foot steps forward, Standing forward then. Inhale, reach out and up. Maybe hands touch. Little back bend. Hands to the heart. It's two rounds complete. Notice your breath. Last round. Inhale, reach out and up. Exhale, fold. Right leg steps back, low lunge. Reach the arms up, crescent moon lunge. Hands to the floor. Down facing dog. Knees, chest and chin. Cobra. Downward dog. Right foot steps forward, low lunge. Lifting up to crescent moon lunge. Remember the integrity of the back bend. Release down. Curl the back set of toes under. Left foot steps forward beside the right foot, standing forward bend. Inhale, reach all the way up. Hands to your heart. One half of a round to go. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fall down. Left leg back, low lunge. Crescent moon, reach all the way up. Hands to the floor, downward dog. Knees down. Chest and chin. Cobra scoop. Integrity of the back bend. Downward dog. Left foot forward. Reach up. Hands down. Right foot steps beside left foot, standing forward bend. Reach to see it. Hands together. Baby back bend. Hands to heart. Notice your breath.
your hips. Turn towards the left hand side of your mat, towards the long side of your mat. Feet are hip distance apart. Plant your right foot where it is and step your left foot out. You can continue to walk it out until you feel a good deal of stretch on the insides of the legs. So pressing the heels down, toes turn ever so slightly in. Keep the lower back nice and long. Keep lengthening. The space between your hips and your armpits lengthens. Hands on your hips, we're gonna fold forward until our spine is parallel to the floor. Lengthen again as if you're trying to move the rib cage away from the pelvis and the shoulder girdle away from the rib cage. Now, you can stay here as you are, or maybe your hands would like to come down to the floor. At this point, maybe you want to go a little deeper, but not so much that you feel you've lost the control in the legs. You want to, at all times, feel like you can move the legs rather than being so deep that you're just hanging out on your ligaments and tendons. So, maybe don't go as wide as you think you should. Again, please, lengthen through your spine. Cow-cat-like movements, so extend the spine, lift your breastbone, lift your tailbone. Exhale, round your spine like a cat. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. With the next inhale, when the spine is long and you've lifted the breastbone forward, Please flatten your hands to the floor if they go there. Keep your spine long, there's extension in the spine. So the tailbone moves back, the sit bones move back, my breastbone moves forward. I'm going to continue now into the forward bend, allowing my heels to press firmly down, my little toe sides and my feet to press firmly down. Maybe I can walk my hands back so the heels of my hands are in line with the heels of my feet. I'm still pressing down. I'm lifting up through the seat, I'm pressing down through my feet and allow the crown of the head to sink deeper towards the floor. Continue here, holding wherever you feel like you can maintain control of the posture. Keep the integrity of the posture, not hanging out and letting yourself be passive. forward again. Right hand goes underneath your nose. Left hand to left hip. Rotate your waist so that your breastbone is pointing to the left. Continue to pull your left elbow and shoulder up towards the ceiling. Maybe you can look up. Maybe you can extend your left arm up. Re really reach out so that you're moving away from the floor and consistently reaching left hand up or left elbow up. Left hand comes back underneath your nose. Right hand to right hip, rotate to your right. Move your shoulder and elbow back, then reach up. Hand comes back down. So we're going to turn towards your right foot. So turn towards your right foot and turn your right foot forward. Walk the back foot in slightly and find a lunge, please. So we're in a high lunge with the left leg back. lengthening through your spine. Step back to downward dog. High lunge with the left foot forward. Keep lengthening through your spine. Go back to downward dog. Right foot forward, high lunge. And this time, you're going to take both hands to your right knee. And then from there, take your hands to your breastbone. And then from there, rotate to the right hand side, hooking your left elbow to the outside of your right knee, and rotate to your right, pointing your right elbow up towards the ceiling. Continue to pull your left hip back and your right shoulder back. So it's like you're trying to corkscrew your spine. Hands go back to the floor, downward dog. Left foot comes forward, high lunge. Keep the weight through equal through both feet, hands to your left knee, hands to your breastbone. Rotate now to your left hand side, keep your right hip back, keep rotating your waist to the left, left shoulder back. Hands go back down, downward facing dog, knees down, forearms to the floor, Elbows directly under your shoulders. You might wrap your fingers around the outside of your upper arms. And
and notice from your knuckle to your fingertip wraps around your elbows. This shows you your shoulder distance apart. Then take your wrist in line with your elbow. Press your arms down into the floor. Draw your shoulders down. So we're pressing the earth away. Curl your toes under if they're not already there. Dolphin, please. Lift your hips like a downward dog. Press the earth away. Walk your feet a little closer towards your elbows. Let's hold. elbows and the forearms exactly where they are. Walk your knees back. Lower the hips to the floor. Reset your elbows if they've moved wide. And then from here, a passive back end. So just feel your chest is buoyant. Relax your shoulders. Feel the weight is supported by your forearms. We're going to hold this position for three minutes. move out to the sides, stack one hand on top of the other, put the forehead on the back of the hand, heels roll out, relax.
Lift your head. Left arm moves out to the side. Wrist is in line with the shoulder, palm presses down. And it's like I want to pull my hand back towards me, but it's just pressing down with a slight sensation of a pullback. The right hand goes on the floor, but the right hand, the fingers are cupped. So I'm going to shoot. The right hand, the fingers are cupped, and we have the elbow pointing up towards the ceiling. We look towards the right hand side, and then right foot steps over to the left hand side, and you pull your knee up towards the ceiling. You could be up on the toes, you might just be touching the floor. If you can get the sole of the foot down, feel free. Now rotate your breast on up towards the ceiling. Keep pressing that left arm down. And then release. So opposite side, so right arm goes all the way out, left fingertips come in, elbow above the wrist, cupping the ground with the left fingertips, looking to your left, and then you're moving your right, right foot over to the left, no, left foot over to the right hand side, and maybe pointing your knee as close to the ceiling as you possibly can. shoulders just roll yourself onto your back body please lying down into your shavasana and just take a few moments here to settle to release to let go you've done a big practice now so allow yourself to really settle and integrate suggestion to you here is that you stay in your shavasana for as long as possible. If you can, maybe put on a, one of my relaxations like a drum journey or a story or my gratitude nidra, something to just give yourself the time to settle or maybe just lie there to your heart's content. Please spend as long as you can in relaxation. As always, from me to you, peace. The Irish word for peace is Shia Khan. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Shia Khan.